We got some new arrow mages. This is an incredibly welcome surprise, but very, very unexpected. A deck that most people who have never played Duel Links have never heard of. Arrow mages are an old favorite of mine, a deck I've been playing for nearly eight years. Uh, arrow mages initially came out way, way back as a life point focused control deck, got a synchro flavoring of about half a year into their life cycle, received a brand new wave several years later that helped them have a game plan in the form of a boss monster and a powerful new trap, but never really brought them far enough to be played beyond the casual level. And finally, with this newest wave coming to the TCG in February 2024 with Phantom Nightmare, the, set, the archetype has starters and extenders that can help it on its own uh, build a board and be something I would be comfortable playing at any tier 2 event or even tier 1 events with the expectation that I'm probably not going to, you know, top them. <laughs> so, we've got five new cards. Two starters, an ex extra deck extender, an extra deck removal, and a trap that's probably not going to see play. The first starter is Romulilith Rosalina. Uh, Romulilith has two functions. The first is a drop-in replacement as a from hand way to gain life points that Angelica served, uh, but rather than reviving herself as a tuner, uh, Rosalind, when, uh, when she's summoned, will summon the aroma from deck. This means she can summon Laurel and start your combos all on her own, the trade-off being she plant locks you the moment you do that for the rest of the turn. This means that the deck has a harder time going into generic synchros, which used to be the bread and butter of the deck. We also received this new fusion, the first fusion for the archetype. Uh, this is a removal-focused boss monster that can pay life points to banish non-targeting cards in the field based on the number of your wins traps. Also, when you gain life points, it will buff all of your plant monsters by an att attack equal to the amount of life points you've gained. These effects mean it's more focused for uh, going second or your turn 3 follow-up. However, it does provide a blanket destruction protection while your life points are higher, and summoning it is fairly free thanks to the new starter, so depending on how the deck checks out, you will likely see people uh, end on it when possible turn one because there's not much a reason not to, especially if you run two. We got a new Link 3. Uh, this Link 3 is generic like Jasmine, an interesting design choice from Konami, and this means it's going to see play in Rika, I guarantee it. When it's summoned, you can add any aroma card from deck to hand, when you gain life points, you can special aromas from your hand to the zone she points to, and you can tribute a monster she points to to uh, target a card on the field and banish it, then gain life points. Unfortunately, like the fusion, the removal effect is not a quick effect, so they are not functional as end board pieces. But the search allows you to easily climb up from Jasmine into some form of end board, uh, and it's just an incredibly useful card to have in rotation. The second starter, because it searches the first one in a roundabout way, is Aroma Blend. By discarding a card, you can place one of your wind's traps face up in your spell and trap zone. You can banish it from the graveyard to fusion summon a plant, uh, it can be any plant, from your extra deck by banishing materials from hand or field, or if your life points are higher, from grave. Uh, the fact that you can banish materials from grave is why this is just incredibly free to add that fusion onto your end board. Now, how is it a starter? Because you didn't open Rosalind or any other starter, you can activate Blend to place Humid on board, and Humid can get you Rosalind. If you did open the starter, you can instead get Blessed to act as a uh, Monster Reborn to use to get whatever piece you're missing. Finally, we've got this new trap, Aroma Healing. It's cool, it gains you a thousand life points for each different aroma name you control, so yes, yeah, you can gain six thousand life off this. And you can banish from the graveyard to revive an aroma and immediately gain life points to trigger its on gain effect. It's cool, but not terribly useful and probably won't see play unless people really want to play around with it. You can search it off of Rosemary if you have nothing better to search though, so that's nice. So this is the list we're going to be trying out to start with. Um, Obviously, these cards are brand new and lots of experimentation is being done, so I would not expect this list to uh, stay static forever. Also, the cards don't come out here for, for three and a half months, so we don't know what the format and balance will look like. But for now, the variant I've chosen to go with is Sunseed. Uh, there are people looking at more pure lists, there's people looking at um, predator plant lists. Sunseed is just the most powerful plant engine in the game by a mile. 
and while, in my opinion, a tad boring, it does everything you want. It gets you a full combo without committing your normal, which is a crucial weakness of the deck. Uh, it can search any of your missing pieces as part of its natural combo lines, and it gets you life point uh, advantage while you're performing it naturally, which easily lets you move into some of the while your life points are higher effects on the aroma side of things. As dull as it is, I feel as long as this engine is legal, and I part kind of hope it's not forever, uh, it's worth running in my opinion. I am running a slightly stripped down version of it, I'm not doubling up on the twin or sewing, just to save some space. Uh, otherwise, the deck has room for 10 generics now, which is a huge uplift. Uh, it used to, or sorry, not 10, uh, this is uh, 13. I had an extra place set in. Um, a huge uplift from deck that used to be like, I'll run three hand traps, six, I really can think I can push it. So 13 generics is fantastic. You could slot a bit more if you cut some of the supplementary engines, but I don't think that's worth it. And otherwise, we have a fairly compact but very clean aroma core. Unfortunately, a lot of the cards in this deck have not aged particularly well, and as a result, a lot of them don't make the cut. Some of them that you could probably add back in are Gardening still has some useful utility, and the ability to summon Under Gardening with Rosalina from Blessed means that I could see like Kananga being a side tech for uh, punishing back row heavy decks in their end phase, but Otherwise, these are the names you'd run, and it's just down to the numbers. Uh, Laurel at 2, Angelica at 1, Jasmine at 1, Marge at 1 is kind of where a lot of us have been feeling, but you could play around with these. And the reason is that this deck used to be heavily reliant on running a large critical mass of generic extenders, and figuring that uh, if you opened any of the two or three card pairs of them that built you a board, you could go from there. But now we have a ton of one card lines. Lone Fire is a one card combo. Rosalind is a one card combo. Blend is a one card combo. Die is a one card combo. Loki is a one card combo. And One for One is a one card combo. Uh, I got 15 one card combos in this deck. So almost always, odds are, I'm going to uh, have the ability to play the game. The big weakness being that a lot of these are reliant on getting a body on board. And if your normal is not rem if you don't open die and your normal is removed, you probably aren't going to do much of anything. Uh, there are some edge cases where you can, but it's rare. So expect that to be a thing the deck struggles with. Uh, we'll continue to investigate options there, but for now, uh, why don't we go ahead and I'll show the one card paths. So. Let me just go ahead and fill my hand up with some generics. I'll go ahead and throw a blend in there too. Uh, there's a reason for it. So let's start with the Sunseed line. If you open Loki. And of course, Lone Fire will also be used in this way. Now, the first part of this combo is something most Yu Gi Oh players or plant players have seen plenty of times by now. So I won't spend too much time explaining it until we get to the point where it diverges. Uh, as usual, you want to stack Twin Chainlink 1 when you remember to because that is vulnerable to Bell, which Dryas is not. Now you could put Thrasher in this spot here instead. You'd still come out with a life point uh, net positive. However, uh, there are steps later in the combo that are made easier by having gained this extra 300 at this point in the line. Uh, if you really want the OTK uh, lines that Thrasher enables, feel free to run that instead, but generally, uh, I prefer this. Okay, and we're going to search out Liliporia, and this is where the divergence happens. Uh, so, go ahead and revive Liliporia. Grab our uh, 
get rid of this Coliseum. Uh, now, one thing to know is that all the Sunside, Sunseed openers can summon Regulus, but the Rosalind openers cannot because you get plant locked off Rosalind, so just bear that in mind. All right, I'm gonna grab our Lone Fire so we can start going into the other parts and put a Laurel on board for later. And since we're not plant locked, let's go ahead and get Regulus up for the protection he provides. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and make Rosemary, and so we're going to search out Blend because we're pretending this copy doesn't exist in our hand. And we're going to use Blend, discarding one of our dead cards, to place Blessed on board. Then we're going to Link Summon a Jasmine, put the Laurel Trigger on Chain, and combine it with a revival saying a thousand to pull back the other jasmine off blessed this will get us two searches one of the searches is going to have to be roslina now the other is free if you used unexpected die and you don't and you have your normal summon preserved if you don't, it's going to have to be either a second Rosalina or an Angelica. I'm going to go ahead and use Angelica for this. Because if you have your normal, you can just go ahead and normal summon Rosalina. Uh, but because I don't, I need to summon her off of Rosemary's effect, life gain effect. So I am going to go ahead and use Angelica to gain. Triggering Romo of Rosemary to summon out the Rosalina, to summon out the Marjoram, allowing me to make Sweet Marge. Go ahead and get another wins. Uh, dried can perform disruption versus humid wins gets you searching. I tend to favor humid but either one works at this stage. Uh, and we have a couple bodies left here to work with. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a Bengal Lancer. And finally we can Spanish blend, we are at positive life points, so we can use our grave materials. We'll use that lone fire from earlier and a laurel to summon out the fusion. And at this point, this is typically where I like to uh, end. Now, we do have a few more things we can do. We have a revival off twin, we have uh, Angelica come back, but there's just not much really worth making here. Uh, the best option we found is the other pre uh, or Sunvine link for the negate, but uh, yeah. For now, this is kind of where I'm ending it. So, alternatively, if we do blend uh, a blend first, uh, so this is going to be when blend is your starter, and human will go ahead and search out. Roslina. No more Roslina. And grab yourself a Laurel. Laurel to gain life points. Jasmine to search. We're still going to go Lily Boria here. Lily Boria is going to get Laurel. When we get the Discolcium, we can't actually summon Regulus this turn. But 
we can still search him out and have him available. I'm going to go ahead and grab a lone fire. Tribute off that Jasmine. To grab a sun seed. Perform the first stages of this line. Go ahead and make our second one of these. Now, because we used uh, the spell earlier, we got human out. So let's go ahead and gain off that. It, uh, otherwise, we just gain off a healer here. Either way works. And in this case, uh, what we want to summon, we've already used Oslina. So we need a different path. And I think what we're going to do is go ahead and grab Marge. No, we need Laurel. Sorry, my brain is a little foggy. So our life points are positive right now. Uh, we have Blend ready to go, but we have a little bit farther before we can uh, finish up. So we're going to go ahead and grab Seraphy Rosemary, and the levels we're going to leave are 1, 3, and 2. And I want to grab Angelica. Gain. Laura's going to trigger. Laura's going to set one of these to a tuner. It doesn't matter which one. We can now go ahead and bring our Angelica back. We actually have two tuners. What mattered was the level. And we can take one of our tuners into Sweet Marge. Get the other wind. In this case, you always want Blessed. It is the strongest of the three winds. And we can go ahead and make, oh, actually in this particular case, I'd recommend a Dryas here. Then using Twin to bring back Rosemary. Uh, you could have done that earlier for the extra search, but I kind of messed up that line. But that's okay. And there's not really a need to leave this on board. So what I'm going to do is take that into Bengal Answer. So I have the search. And Blessed, if I need the destruction protection, can go ahead and bring uh, our Malolith back. Now the trick is you need uh, a form of life point gain. So if you don't have any of them in your hand, you're, uh, you, you can go ahead and search it with Humid by paying 1,000. So let me just show how that works out. If I need these destruction uh, protection, I can just go ahead and get that back. Add Rosalind. And when I'm ready to fire, uh, I can pitch Rosalind on one of these. Okay. And just wanted to show off a couple of replays. This guy, uh, obviously, I'm not sure what he was going for. Um, I'm not terribly familiar with the Chimera pathing. 
uh, but he burns his ashen Fenrir very prematurely. Now, I did mess up. I could have summoned Regulus if I had waited to uh, summon Rosalind. Uh, I just kind of had a brain fart there. It happens. Luckily, it is not going to matter. It's okay. I'm going to make a worse misplay in a second. So in my infinite wisdom, I'm going to bounce this because somehow I forgot what Catch to FN here did. And so that just comes right back out. Uh, this time we're going to get rid of it for realsies. By popping it. So I played that terribly, like that's entirely on me, but luckily his hand is bad, so. Yeah, not the uh, not the best play on my part. This time we're gonna remember to get a Regulus out. And we're gonna go ahead and eat that Albus straight away. And with Albus dealt with, uh, it is a simple matter to kind of vomit our cards onto the board. And yeah. Let's talk about one where I play with a little bit more uh, brain power. He's gonna go ahead and imperm on the Dryas. It's not the optimal place to imperm if you ask me because it's recoverable even within engine. Uh, but it makes enough sense, and it's fine. We have the Rosalind we can normal summon and play that way. And boy, am I glad we're going first, because we opened no hand traps. Now, I had to humid here because I wanted a way to get Marsha on board to make the synchro. And I just want that body there. Um, I, I'm i going for some card advantage because I want to draw into a hand trap. Uh, that's why I went uh, for Lily. I, I still should have made Bengal answer. I just didn't. But it's going to be okay. Uh, now, I have Marge here because I'm waiting for when he puts the two fusion materials in grave because I know DDD is going to do that. Uh, we're almost there. Unfortunately, because our effects go off simultaneously, I have to wait until they hit the grave to do this. We're going to go ahead and eat those two and then Marge out his graveyard. And because we can stack our triggers, we can force the Xyz to eat the Jasmine. Now, had I played that a little better, I think he wouldn't have had even this much of a board, but it's fine. I have plenty of resources. I certainly don't want him to just turn that off. And that's that. Here up against Matanko. I'm going to start with the die line. Uh, he opened no hand traps, so we are free to just kind of play through.
we haven't used our normal summon yet, so we are actually free to uh, go ahead and get Roz this way. And so we have uh, an, a negate, a bounce, a pop, uh, and two hand traps. So we don't want that to go through. Now he's going to kaiju that to Dark Hole, but we're just going to go ahead and revive it so the Dark Hole fizzles. And yeah, he will scoop there. Okay, so you know, early days of the new card, still getting the hang of it. Not the most elegant replays, but. Hopefully that gives a decent feel for where we're looking with the new decks. Uh, does it solve all the problems Aroma's had? No. But it's super exciting and I'm looking forward to playing with the cards. That's all.